And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your We are the last Americans. We are the last Americans. We are Yo yo, what's up, everybody? Uh, happy uh, happy days, everybody. I just I just literally like fuck <laughs> zoomed in, dude. Sorry. No, it's good. It's good, man. I don't care. Yeah, you know, you know. I'm just. I saying. don't get too butthurt over like a, a timing of things. Well, I feel bad. You know, the reason I feel bad is because we are later than we normally are. And yeah. so a lot of people listening is later for them as well. So I yeah, feel bad true. about that. But you know what? I got to work. Yeah, but I mean. Yeah. I got to work, man. Got to flip this around. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't feel right with the front board hat <clears throat> on the show right now. Uh, yeah, man. It's just, uh, you know, you, I had to deliver a package, too. I got to be honest with you. I had to get off work. Oh. And I had to go to the USPS. Uh, oh, okay. An actual package. Yeah. I, you know, it's... it's I uh, thought maybe you had to run home real quick and... Oh, deliver, deliver that package. package. <laughs> uh, you know, you go into uh, USPS past hours, and I always sit outside because there's no one else there, you know? And I just look in there for a little bit. So I'm like, I, there has to be a homeless person in there. Like, I feel like it's a the perfect USPS? place. Yeah, because they're open. Like, it's open. Like, you can go inside and drop off packages and shit. The, the lobby's closed, but the actual, you know, the mailboxes and the package drop is always oh, open. okay, yeah. And it's the perfect place for a homeless person to sleep. Like, they can actually go in there and be warm. Does it make sense? Yeah. So uh, when I go up, I always like. You're always expecting someone. Like, I stand on the outside floor. the door and I just look around. I'm like, because I'm not going to get fucking, you know, mugged by some fucking homeless <clears throat> weirdo. There's not that many homeless around. I got to be honest with you. There's, it's not there like isn't. other places, but um, it always freaks me out a little bit. Because it's like, there's no one there. But it's like, is there? Because so? they have these little like hallways for the, uh, for the little, you know, if you have your own little oh, lockbox. Yeah, box yeah thing. lockboxes, yeah. And uh, you never know who's going to jump out of those things. It's true. So it's almost like you're walking into a horror movie. Like if you're um, thinking about it before you even get in there and you're just like, yeah, looking looking around. You just like yell when you open the door. No, it's, it's lit. Oh, it's lit. But you open the door up and you just like, listen, I'm going to kick your ass. if you fucking jump me. If you come after me, I'm going to fucking, you just yell out. Yeah. I got a gun. (laughs) I got a fucking gun. (laughs) You know what I mean? Something. It'd be weirder if it was dark. They should do it. They should just leave the doors unlocked. So people can drop off packages, but also keep it dark. Take a risk. Uh, yeah. If you haven't noticed, Greg cannot make it tonight. He's got some, He's got important things to do, and that is to uh, watch his son play some sports. Yeah, it's one of those nights, you know what I'm saying? So we're gonna we're gonna just shoot the shit, man. That's what yeah, we're gonna do. Yeah, we're actually uh, gonna be looking into getting Van into some sports. Good, I think it's a good thing, man. Yeah, uh, we don't know. I don't know what's available for kids that age. Every well, most through, everything like the summer and stuff. Oh well, time of year. Yeah, that's one thing. Because um, right, because it's spring. Baseball's already started, so we can't yeah. can't do that. So I don't know. Like we're gonna soccer, have to look around. They, you know, even like, uh, you know, t- Taekwondo or fucking, you know, some karate or something. Mm-hmm. Just, well, see, the nice thing is it's not that it's like an effective thing, but I will say that like, can be, well, it's better than nothing. I'll put, I'll put it that way, but it's good for like discipline and shit. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like that always has been traditionally known for like, you, you learn how to like listen and be disciplined mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, even take care of yourself in, in some aspects, but any sport that's like, uh, you know, a team sport. And we were talking about this before your son went into school, right? And and my kids were in school. Uh, when they're not around other kids all the time, they can be little hellions, man. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. they're just not used to it. But then when they go to school and they're around other kids, they see how other kids behave. Mm-hmm. Sometimes bad, sometimes good, because some other kids are shitheads. You know what uh, I'm saying? We've actually had a, a kind of a turning point with Van, with his attitude. A turning point? Yeah, because he was starting to get really uh, kind of just dickheadish. Okay, he and he was like asshole. just acting out and like not listening. At school? No, well, at school and here. Okay, okay. He actually, the teacher sent home a letter about him yeah. like misbehaving and like just being a little shithead. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, I me and Nash talked, and I was like, "Hey, it's about time we we need to start taking away the shit he cares about." Good, he laying the law down, and he did not like that. That's good though. But guess what? He's got a, a smiley face on his little report thing every day for the last week. And then you give a shit back. And then he's been, he hasn't been a shithead. Did you set like a stand? Did you, Cause that's what we would do. We'd say, listen, we're going to take your, like <clears throat> our oldest, especially like her little, she has a phone, but it's not a functioning phone. Like yeah. she just has it because she has a messenger that she has, uh, you know, we get to select the friends that she has on there and then our, uh, you know, family. Yeah. 
And so we we took that shit away, man. So you're going to act out. You, you're, it's gone for a week. Mm -hmm. If you don't change it by a Friday, it's gone for another week. Is that what you did? You set yeah, like a time uh, frame? Yeah. He, uh, basically, we said uh, it was before our friends came down. Haley came down. Yeah. And uh, he had like, they didn't work. They didn't go to school that Friday. So he had Wednesday, Thursday left. And I was mm. like, you come home with a smiley face Wednesday, Thursday. And because we took away his Xbox and he couldn't watch YouTube anymore. And we told him if you get another sad face on his day, then he wasn't going to go play in the pool when the, mm. when the other kids got here and shit. And you said, you get a smiley face the next two days before they get here. And then you'll be in the clear. Yeah. Like, yeah. And he that, did. That's good. Now you got to keep up with it. Yeah. Right. Cause if they slip, you got to go right back into it. So they understand that there's consequent, like they don't, mm -hmm. it's not just a one-time thing. Yep. That's good, man. That's good. And you know what? Like, I think most kids are, are, uh, you know, just hyper and my, my youngest, they can get all hyper and school really does like do something. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like where you, you like some kids don't, but like, I noticed a huge thing when your son went to school about just like, he got so much calmer, dude. Like mm, he, he yeah. like, like, uh, would be the like grew up almost like it was like a growing experience. For yeah, him. it was definitely because <laughs> he's, he's he changed a lot. Over he's this he's last got some fucking year. energy, bro. He does. Your kid has some. Both of them. He was doing front, he was doing front flips in the pool today. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I noticed in the comments that somebody's like, uh, Dave's been wearing that brace for a while, bro. I, I I'll explain. I don't have carpal tunnel. I don't think I do. Oh. Uh. But I I uh, a couple of weeks. I told you guys. I think I talked about it. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, we had one of our coworkers, he, he broke a sprinkler in our freezer. Okay. And it flooded our freezer. And then it was like three inches of freaking ice, really thick ice. And so like, whenever this was the end beginning of March, I don't remember, but I had to go in there few for like, weeks, yeah, ago. I had to go in there, uh, for like three days and break ice with a sledgehammer. And I don't know what the fuck is eight, you know, seven hours, eight hours of breaking ice on concrete. I jarred something, bro. So I don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, I actually, part of me thinks I, I like may have fractured a bone in my hand, but I don't want to go to the doctor. Maybe. Possible. I mean, there's not anything they're going to do for it. There's nothing they're going to do, right? But, uh, or, you know, I was thinking there was like I a pinched surgery. nerve or something like that. Like, so I'm like, is it a pinched nerve? Is it a fucking little, maybe I got like a little stress fracture. Mm. I don't know. It sucks. But I, you know, what's funny is that I was working, I've been working with this thing. And the whole fucking, it ripped. So now I got oh. this, I got this like, and I was kind of like a little, a, a little weapon. Yeah. I was like, I could cut this. You sharpen that thing up. Yeah, man. Like this is fucking, good for the U USBS, like, bro. Like a Wolverine. Yeah, bro. Guy comes up, tries to have him. Fuck you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, you know, I don't like going, I don't like going to the doctor. And uh, so yeah, I, had, you know, I, you have to do that shit at work. Cause I, I told my boss, she's like, why are you wearing it? And I said, this is, you know, I, when I was breaking the ice and you have to fill all that fucking paperwork, man, mm -hmm. the work comp shit. And she's like, well, do you need to go? I'm like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, it's fine. It's getting better, which is good. Cause it was, dude, there was a couple, a week or so where I was struggling with sleep and shit. Well, yeah, you were was, saying like any movement and you're just like, oh, it would like send sh like, you know, shocks up my arm. And then like at night, especially when I was sleeping, like it, it was keeping me up all night long. I sleep for a half an hour, wake up, sleep for a half an hour. Fucking brutal, dude. You probably fractured something. Yeah. It, a small it feels bone or something. like when I broke my foot a little bit. You know, I mean, I was still walking around because they actually misdiagnosed me when I broke my foot. They they said it was an upper uh, ankle sprain. And so they gave me a soft boot and I yeah. wore that. This was years ago. And I wore that around. And uh, I was like, I was out of work because my foot was swollen and shit. And uh, it was like a month, month and a half. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? It's not getting better. They sent me to uh, physical therapy. So they're like, fucking reefing on it and re shit. Reaming on my foot, <laughs> fucking pulling my foot. Around. And finally, after like two months or maybe even a little bit more than that, it might've been, it might've been significantly more than four months. Maybe I finally went to the doctor. And I was like, listen, I, I like, this was supposed to be an ankle sprain. This shit hurts still. Like when I walk, I can feel like it, you know? And so they did one of those like cast scan. We put in the tube mm -hmm. and they did like a, you know, a full scan on your cat. And uh, yeah. And yeah. And they, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they go, oh, um, nice. yeah, you have a, you have a broken foot. And I said, so for three, four, whatever it was, months, you guys told me I had an ankle sprain. I've been walking around with a soft boot. It's not even like a cat, nothing. Yeah. And uh, they're like, yeah, it's about healed up, though. So I had to go to my boss, but like, <laughs> show him the x-ray and be like, this is why. Because he was, he was telling me at the time, he's like, bro, you, you have an ankle sprain. Like, what are you doing? It's like three months. Like, what are we doing? Are you like milk? He, I thought he was, you know, he thought I was yeah. milking this shit. 
So I had to show them that, and I'm like, hey, they fucking missed that. I'm like, fucking Kaiser, bro. Mm. Fucking Kaiser, man. And in Portland, Kaiser at that. You know what I'm saying? But so that's why I, I kind of feel like there's, you know, maybe like a little bone in there that's. Yeah, it's funny how that kind of shit happens. Cause mm. like, I feel like there's a lot of people in, in positions they probably shouldn't be in. <sighs> yeah, cause I, I, my boss dropped me off when it happened. I, I ran it over with a pallet jack. That should have been dead giveaway one. <laughs> It did give away. Yeah. Um, I, I, my heel hit a pallet, you know, cause I was mm-hmm. going, moving a pallet jack and the pallet jack kept going and, and it, and it pulled my toes up all the way and something, I heard it pop, you know, and all this stuff. And when I went to the Kaiser, they just looked at me and they're like, uh, I'm looking at it. They're like, yeah, it's bruised, swollen to the ankle sprain. I was like, well, okay. You know, like, I, <laughs> okay, that's what it is. You know, it's a fucking doctor. Yeah, but after no. you're telling them, like, your actual foot hurts, and it's not really your ankle. Well, I, I was real pissed, because I was like, you sent me to fucking physical therapy, and I had a broken bone in there, and you guys were fucking massaging and fucking, mm-hmm. you know, pushing my foot back and forth, and every time I'd go, I was like, I fucking hate this. It sucks. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a bad ankle sprain, bro. Well, you shouldn't have to go to, like, physical therapy just for an ankle sprain. Because <sighs> they, they thought I had, because my toes got bent back. At yeah. the time, they thought that I might have had like some tendon damage and they were trying to, you know, mm. they were they were like, well, maybe, you know, that was the kind of initial thing was like you had the sprain, but maybe you also had some tendon damage. And so they were trying to like work that out, you know, like stretches and stuff. And no, nah, it wasn't really should have sued their ass. They, sh- they told me I should have went for physical therapy when I broke my foot, but I didn't. No, nah, it's not worth it's not worth it. man. Plus, it's always some like young dude who's like way too happy. I, I, I didn't like that <laughs> shit. How you doing today, Dave? All right. I'm I went like, to I went to the I'm doctor tired, one bro. time. I uh, was racing and I caught my handlebar on like a corner post, mm. and my finger got smashed between the clutch lever and the handlebar. And when I got off the track, like my finger had a huge fucking lump in it, and it had taken everything inside and like squished it into a bump. Mm. And I was like, "This looks fucked up." Like it looked like my finger was like broken like up above and i was like this doesn't look good so we went to the doctor and i got x-rays and they're like it's not broken it's just like you just fucked it's, it. it's just weird it's <laughs> okay. not bro- it's not broken or anything god damn it but you did but you do have a broken knuckle on your, your other finger that is almost healed and i was like oh okay i didn't even know and that guy got paid like 200 bucks <laughs> an hour yeah to tell you like eh, it's just it's, a, it's weird well i've been <laughs> it's yeah. fucking weird I've I've been to the doctor a lot. I I just don't like going, man. That's uh, so to go back to it. That's why I'm like pushing it back because I just don't I don't want to do it, man. You know what I mean? I don't want to like first of all, I don't want to miss any work. It's not worth it. Like I can function at work just fine. Like yeah. it really doesn't hurt in the day. It's mostly at nighttime. Like when I go to bed, then I start to you when know you, all, when you stop like when I stop moving around with it and like after like the adrenaline's down because you know at work you're just, your mind's on whatever you're doing. Yeah. And then you get home and you're trying to sleep and it starts to throb. You know, yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fucking fine, dude. No carpal tunnel. Maybe carpal tunnel. I don't know. I don't know, man. The other good news is I started playing bass again, man. Not that anybody cares. But oh, yeah. My wife bought me. Uh, oh, shit. I forgot about that. Yeah, she bought me a course. bass cab. And I, I bought some. Oh. Uh, she bought me a bass uh, practice cab for my birthday. Yeah. Because I was telling her, I was like, man, it sucks. Because I, I left my, I have a big ass like stage cab that I used to tour with. Mm-hmm. And I left that in town with Flat Earth Owl and shit. And because uh, I didn't, I didn't want to haul it. Yeah. And um, they're going to hold on to it for me. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully they're not abusing it. But <laughs> either way, I don't Al, have anything. He, no, he's, he's not going no. to. Uh, but I need something. I haven't played. I really haven't played bass in. Not since I've known you. Ten years. I'd say ten years. A couple years after. We, I, I remember you, ha- you had your bass in the podcast studio yeah. for a little while. Yeah. When we first started. Well, but yeah. you never, I'd never seen you play it. When my oldest daughter was maybe one or two, um, I was still playing around with it and, and kind of fucking around with it. But I had no reason to, you know, like mm-hmm. I wasn't in a band anymore. We had kids. I was working, you know, I just, I haven't. So like I restringed it and shit and I'm like, just been jamming around. It's kind of fun, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of miss it. You know? I, I, it's like kind of like starting over a little bit, even though I, I pick it, you know, pick it up fast, but I don't remember shit. I don't remember any <laughs> fucking songs that I was doing. I nothing. But it's fun, dude. It's fun. It's fun yeah. to like get back because music to me was a huge part of my life before all this stuff, you know, before the show. And, uh, you know, we obviously did it for since I was like 14, 15 years old with Greg, you know. Mm-hmm. And so it, it was just a fun thing, man. Yeah, I know. I don't have I, I have my acoustic still. 
the, it needs restraining and everything, but I don't have any of the guitars I had. I had a half, I had a half stack. I don't have that anymore, obviously. Well, back when I tried to start a band. Yeah. You tried. <laughs> it didn't work. Hey, I'll say this, man. And, and, and maybe some of you listen and have been in a band. It's a tough thing, man. Cause even when you have like good friends, it's like the show, you know, like uh, me and Greg have known each other for since we were in like second grade, you know, yeah. and uh, one of my best friends ever. Right. And like we were in a band like you just when you're around each other a lot and you're pra- we were practicing every day. Like we didn't do this like once a week. twice. We practiced every day for two hours and we were really good, man. Like we we got to the point all these years of playing and, and switching members. And, and we got to a point where we were like really fucking solid. man. Yeah. And uh, but with that comes tension. You know, I, I didn't like what Greg was drumming. He didn't like what I was doing on the bass. And it's like, it fucking sucks. You hear it on the show, dude. <laughs> like, ah, oh, you fucking, this is, and that's, it's like, it's yeah. like brothers, dude. It's just like, I didn't like that. That's, you know, but that, there's tension to it. And a lot of people just don't, they can't get past that. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't even get people to show up. Well, that's, that's the thing too. Like, they'd be like, yeah, man, I'm in, I'm in, you know, we'd, I'd go over and like jam with this person and I'd jam with this person. Mm. And then we'd be like, yeah, fucking, and then never go anywhere. Uh, I, I, well, musicians aren't known to be <laughs> reliable. Yeah. Uh, we've been through a lot. We, me and Greg were in the band with our friends in high school and that band lasted all the way through high school. I mean, well, no, as long as we were in high school and then, uh, you know, we had some issues with some guys that were uh, some of our friends, they, they got into drugs and stuff, unfortunately. And so we switched members, we got a new singer uh, we went on tour, then the, that kind of separated and, uh, I joined Opticus with Flat Earth Al and, uh, we did really good things with that band yeah. and, and, and which that band is still going. They're still, there's, you guys want to listen to them. They're on Spotify. Yeah. Opticus, man. Um, love those guys. And, and like, you know, for me, I, I th- that's a fun thing for them. You know, it's unfortunate because they do have talent, Yeah, but it's a fun thing. Uh, cause everybody's, you know, working and stuff. And then, I think they're actually getting, they're more serious now than they have been. Um, I don't, yeah, but see, there's like, they're serious about making music, which I think is good, but they're, it's not just about just recording shit. Like, yeah. um, you know, there's a lot of like, just like a show or anything else. You gotta like promote yourself. We gigged all the time, dude. Like, it, I mean, we were practicing all week. Uh, we gigged every single weekend, you know, we toured mm. for a couple months at a time. Like if we go out here, we go to the Midwest and, yeah. you know, and so like, there's a lot to it to like make it something more than just some like local band, which was, it's just fine. We got paid well to play local stuff and we just do it and make money, get free drinks all night long and party with everybody. Uh, and that, that's fine. That's a fine thing to do. Um, it wasn't until Ashland, me and Alex left Opticus or we didn't, it, it, that kind of broke up, but we went to Ashland and that's where I was like, this is the band, bro. You know, mm. like I really felt like Ashland, more in your wheelhouse, not really so much in the wheel. They were both awesome, but uh, that band just, we were playing a lot of shows. The tours were good. The, the crowds were really, really good. And it was more of a modern music. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, it was, yeah, it was yeah. the warp Tour era style thing. And uh, I really, and even Greg will tell you, man, like he used to go to our shows all the time. Like every time we do the shows and, and uh, it was just, it had all the right stuff. We were like, we sounded great live. We had the light show. I mean, we were doing all the extra stuff that we could. And it just was a, that band should have went somewhere. And that that's a bummer, dude. You know, it's a bummer. Yeah. Uh, but there, there's some young kids in the band and it got, it got kind of weird, you know, like we were a quote unquote Christian band. Were we, mm-hmm. we had Christian members for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but our guitar player was, uh, I was 24, 25. Alex was like 23, four. Our guitar player is 15. Oh yeah. You told me about a He's story 15. where he like, you played a bar and he had to like run his cord out. In the fucking no, outside. he could play he no, no. They that that wasn't that wasn't the case. No, no, <laughs> they wouldn't let him in, so he couldn't he couldn't come in until it was it was our time to set up, oh. and we had to play the show, and he had to leave the show. Mm. Um, and that's happened a few times. But at fifteen years old, the other two were seventeen, eighteen years old, and so it's just like you know you're young and you're kind of stupid. And one of them left the band because he found God again, which you know, great, you mm. know. But he was just like, God doesn't want me to play music, and I was like. We just recorded like a week ago. We just spent a ton of money <laughs> on a really nice recording. Like, what do you mean? You're quitting? He's like, yeah, I, I, I got to quit. God told me to. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what do you do at that point? I told him I wasn't paying for the recording. That's what I did. And they got pissed because like we all at the time, we all had to. Me and Alex were older and we said, we don't want to do this recording. We're not ready. 
Yeah. Like we have a couple new songs that we want to get dialed in before we go record. And the, and the other three system. younger ones were like, no, we should do this. And the guy we recorded with did a bunch of stuff with Tooth and Nail Records, a very good uh, recording artist, or, uh, you know, did mastering and all that stuff. Really good. And we just were like, fuck, fine. So the deal was that we're all going to pitch in a grand or whatever it yeah. was to do this recording. So we went and recorded and uh, we had to pay him afterwards and we weren't even done with the recording. Like we had all the, tra- I still have the tracks. Oh, when he quit, we didn't get the vocals laid down. We have like uh, you know, fairly rough mix and it sounds good, but it's a rough mix. And then he quit. And uh, he's like, so he came to my house and he's like, told me he found God, he, you know, whatever. Fine. And he goes, uh, and this is the last thing he said to me. He goes, and I need that thousand dollars from you so we can pay the guy. And I said, no, I'm not paying anything because I didn't want to do this in the first place and you quit. So you're going to pay the extra thousand dollars. Like I'm not fucking doing it. He's like, dude, you can't do that. I'm like, yes, I can. God told me to. That's why I told him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. God told me. I was, I, yeah, you know, I mean, it's bullshit. I, like, at the time, it was a thousand bucks for me at the time. You know, I was just with my wife. Uh, you know, we just, we weren't married yet, but we had just got together. Um, and it just, I'm not going to just drop without for nothing. It was for nothing. And yeah. it was your choice to quit. So at that point, the band ceased to exist. And it's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. Yeah. Because I, like I, I heard... Like we've used songs from that band in our stuff multiple times mm-hmm. and it was sick. Yeah. If you listen to uh, the uh, music reaction, which we haven't done it for a while, but if you listen to that, that yeah, intro, the is, intro is, that intro is actually, yeah. yeah, just a little breakdown, that little one part, but uh, yeah, no, yeah. didn't mean to get sidetracked on that. Yeah. It's just, it's nice when you, you know, yeah, you did the same thing, man. You went out and ride, rode your motorcycle in the yard and shit. It's just nice when you like, something familiar that you used to really love to do. You can even just, you don't have to like get passionate about it again, but the fact that you can like get on and just take it for a spin yeah, or like jam around for a minute. It's just like, man, that's, I, I remember why I liked it so much. It's yeah. fucking awesome. You know? Yep. So, uh, yeah, as far as, uh, articles, no, I don't have that many. I really don't, man. Um, one of them, <laughs> which one did I send you? I sent you. Uh, oh, this one was weird. I'll, I'll do the, let's do this one. Cause I really don't understand it, but every, I've seen this on TikTok. Uh, yesterday and today, uh, a couple different ones. It's that one there. It's the uh, physicist found the ghost haunting the world's most famous particle accelerator. And this dude uh, made a video and he's like, the particle accelerator is haunted. It's fucking haunted. There's a ghost inside of it. And I'm going, what the fuck? They, ghost in the machine? They fucking spun around at him so fast that they fucking created a ghost, not a black hole. Right? Uh, but it's, 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 it's not really, it's not a ghost. It's, okay. a, it's an invisible force. Which is still weird. I just, listen, this is past my pay grade. I got to be completely honest with you. I think it's past all of our pay grades. It says, in a new research published in the Journal of uh, Journal Natural Physics, scientists at CERN in Switzerland, which is, which is a huge one, and uh, how do you say it? Goethe University, Frankfurt, in Germany, announced that they had an isolated, resonant, quote-unquote, ghost okay. that affects how particles behave inside the superproton synchrotron, SPS. And they said it's a 3D shape that shifts over time, meaning it's best measured in 4D. Ooh. Okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying to have you soak this in. And the secret is the same reason you will spill your coffee walking back to your desk or super bounce your friends off the trampoline. So it's saying, like, I guess by them saying the trampoline thing, you know, like you jump just as they're getting ready to yeah. land and it fucking shoots them. The SPS is a ring that nearly four, is four miles across. We know this stuff, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the ghost is caused by resonance when things, this is the article down or the paragraph below here, just a little bit. The ghost is caused by resonance when things have energy and make waves, those waves can interact with each other and create weird little low, what is that? Losi? Lo, 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 where energy is amplified. When you walk with coffee, each step creates waves in the liquid that eventually meet each other and spill over and on the trampoline, one person jumping, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's in accelerator physics and understanding of resonance and nonlinear dynamics is crucial for avoiding the loss of beam particles. So uh, what, it, listen, it gets real fucking nerdy. I'm not going to lie to you, but what I, what I wanted to point out was like, this is another one of those like trap articles because it intrigued me, right? I see yeah. videos popping up and they say they found a ghost in the, in the particle acceleron fucking whatever accelerator. And I'm like, what? Cause we've talked about the black hole thing, mm-hmm, like them creating mm-hmm. black holes. Or opening up dimensional like little like portal fucking, yeah. things. Uh, but a ghost? But that's not really what it is. You know what I'm well, saying? Why, mean, is no one really, why is no one really saying like it's not like a fucking ghost? Dude. Well, it's not like the, a ghost spirit. 
but be, having leftover energy that ends up affecting its surroundings when you try to go in there again. That's technically what a ghost. I mean, it's a ghost. It's it's residual energy. I know, but see, I, I like term wise, I find that weird. Because yeah, when I yeah, tell you I've seen a ghost, the word ghost, if I say ghost, you assume Ooh. person, like person, yeah, like personality, uh, is doing something or interacting with you, yeah. Um, you think of human form, right? That's what you generally think of. Obviously, there's demonic, which is mm. a different thing, but like to me, that's more just like energy. It's like some weird kind of a force field or energy that's that's manipulating things in this accelerator. So it, it did say it was leftover stuff. Well, scroll down real quick to that paragraph right there. In the SBS, particles only have two degrees of freedom. That sounds like a terrible dictatorship, which doesn't sound so complex. Like the photo, uh, photons inside a fiber optic line, these S SLS photons are traveling in an overall path. They can also bounce within that path because even a narrow beam or cable still has thickness. SBS isn't, thick, isn't a thick donut but it's still a real life donut rather than a circle or jump. It's just like nonsensical talk. Mm. I want to know where the fuck the ghost is, man. That's what I want to know because everybody's talking about some ghosts. And well, it's I probably not I... something you can see. Well, what you uh. can see, obviously they said they can see whatever it is in a four dimensional form, which they I said it's a 3d how. thing, but it's best seen as a 4d. How do you see 4d? I don't know. I'm not that smart, dude. You can't. Not that smart. I is best like best seen in four. Is it say? Did it say best? Yeah, it said scene? best seen in four D. Go all the way up. Did it say best seen? I don't remember. It's a three D shape that shifts over time. Meaning measured it's best in four D. Measured in four D. Yeah, that's okay. what I was saying. We gotta make sure we say that it was best measured in four D. Okay, so it's an actual thing. It's an actual thing inside the accelerator. Yeah, that ends up ends up being there while they're trying to do their experiments. But see, it can go farther. What is that? What is that thing? Right? Like, that's the real question. I know yeah, they use it, quote unquote ghost, but take that shit but off is the it table. A but is it, is it residual or is it, or are you, like mm -hmm. we said before, are you creating a doorway or a pathway into something else and it's affecting your experiment? My question is like, if you take away the whole ghost thing that people are really talking about or have talked about, what is created that is that has like almost like a density to it that is affecting the movement? You know what I'm saying? Like something because black hole that makes sense, right? We know what a black hole is. So if they say kind like this, well, to an extent, we we understand like at least to an extent what it is. So if they say like, hey, this thing's traveling at such a speed that there's such a, uh, it's creating these little miniature black holes, right? Because of something, we can at least go like, I don't get it. But I get it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there, that makes sense just because it's weird. But, like, something is created that's, like, affecting the yeah. flow. Yeah, or is it... What or, created it? Or are you accelerating these particles in such a way that you're affect? Are they affecting time? That's, that's a weird one, right? Could it be used for something? You know, that's what I'm curious about. Yeah, like, how many... Because if you can create this thing that's, like, measure, or measured in 4D... That's affecting, and it's like this. Uh, it's like this well, thing. It's yeah, just like and, a thing. and you know it's there. Can you use that thing? Is is it, is there a capability to just be able to use that in in something as an instrument in our real life? What weaponry? Or like, what is it? it what is? Why don't you isolate that thing or try to, and then figure out what it, what it, what, it, what it does and what it? I don't fucking do, get this shit. Or what it is even. I don't get it. I don't even get what they're talking about. Well, Quite honestly, it's hard to have a conversation. I don't even fucking understand it at all. But true. my point is, is let's say they shoot a particle. Because mm -hmm. this is just what my brain thinks they're talking about. I, I could be so far off. It's not even funny. But let's say they're shooting this little particle. Wow. It's going around this four mile track. You know, yeah. little tiny thing. If something is interfering with that and it's like ricocheting off or bouncing it off. My question would be like, is that a force field ish kind of thing that you could put around a vehicle? Could have put it around a, one of our planes, right? That like if a bullet or if a fucking missile is getting shot, something it could ricochet that thing off. You know what I'm saying? There's mm -hmm. an, there's like a field around it. You know, like something you, like that. Like if you could like mimic its molecular structure to yeah. create something that would do the same thing. Yeah, it's like an invisible shield. It's something like Marvel shit. You see that? Uh, th those actually exist remember a long time ago we seen like a, a video or something of the invisibility cloak oh yeah, yeah or like the invisibility stuff that you can like 
the the sheets of whatever and it's really just fragmentation and yeah. it makes it just it's moving blurry. light and shit. I seen a video the other day where they it was an actual like blanket. And the guy literally held it up. And I draped, don't believe it. Draped it over him. And I don't believe that one. I've seen it. I have, have hard, I have a hard time with it, man. I have a hard time with any of those blanket shit. I really do. I see it and I go, this is CJ. I just, I don't believe it at all. Maybe. I mean, the one that got me, right? The one that I think is legitimate is there was a, I'm going to say Japanese, but it could be any Asian. I have no idea. Uh, but they had like a, sh- uh, a panel. And it was like this uh, clear panel. And it was, yeah. it was light refracting. And he held it in front. He had two other gentlemen slide. It was on a stage for like something. And he had him slide it in front of him. And like when they put it in front of him, you could only see what's behind them. Like you could see the, the yeah. lights and stuff behind him, but you couldn't see their legs or anything like this. Yeah, that one there. That's 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 basically the same same principle. Whoa. Yeah, it's like. It's... Yeah. They walk behind it. Yeah. That's weird. But it's the same thing. It's just a light refraction. The way they have the the plastic. But see, that's is. what it is, though. That's But what I'm saying is, is like, that's fine. That is cloaking. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because, like, I'm if you really think about, it, like, a, a true, like, you're not just going to be invincible. You know what I mean? That's what would have to happen. You'd have to literally be invincible. So yeah. in order for that to work, you need something that is going to warp light, warp the image to where it doesn't look like it's actually there. That seems very plausible, and obviously it's real. I've seen uh, we saw you know hundreds of thousands of people were watching it on stage as this guy was doing. Oh this yeah, shit. and so that's a legitimate thing because you could do you could be in war, and you're in a bunker. You put those things up; they have no idea where you're at. They can't see. You know, if you're a uh, hundred miles or not hundred miles, a hundred yards away, you wouldn't even know that there was something there. True. You cover uh, the front of a tank with that thing. You're not even going to see that tank sitting there. You know what I'm saying? You won't. It'll just bend around. Yeah, you that's legitimate. That's legitimate, dude. I'm trying to find out. I felt like I saved it. Oh, here we go. I don't buy that. The, I just don't. Right there. Yeah, Doesn't see, that? that looks so fake to me. Does it look fake? Yeah. Or does it just look fake because it's so um? Nah, that looks like a green screen, dude. Like a green fucking thing that he, he put the images on. Maybe. I don't trust his language. <laughs> I guess what it is. If that's think. real, that's crazy. If that's real, that guy's a, uh, a trillionaire. And I, I don't believe it. That's why I don't believe it. You know what I'm saying? First of all, if you have that technology, you are not posting that on TikTok. You're not. Yeah. You're selling that to the highest bidder in some country. Because that would be, that would change everything. It would change everything. It Good. would. And so why would you just share that on TikTok? There's no reason for it. That'd be like top secret shit, bro. It doesn't look real, though. That's Unless the it was just a private company. It wasn't made yeah. by like a military. It just doesn't look real. Like my, like the, to it's me, probably not real. When you see that, that sheet, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense, right? Like mm. it's refla- refracting light and shit. It yeah. makes sense. Um, plausible. That one, I'm like, bro, that's like, even the way that the colors are, it just looks like it's a green screen. The hard thing about that sheet is you wouldn't be able to use that as like a coating on anything because, no. it, because it has to no. have the light behind it. No, you wouldn't, but you, you could throw it over something. No, because if you have that on a surface, then you, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't be able to shine through and refract the light. No, no, no. I understand that, but that's not the, yeah, I get what you're saying. I was mixed up on which one you were talking about. Oh, they were saying like, so one of the guys that was testing that sheet, like they put military guys like in a field Yeah. and they had, each of them had like a, a three foot by three foot or two foot by three foot section. They laid it on the ground. They carried it with them and, and they, they, just they like opened it up and they them. propped it and they laid behind it with their guns. Yeah. And like when you were any distance away, it just looked like grass. Like, it, 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 there's just nothing I, I, there. They probably do use that shit. Oh, and it makes perfect sense. Yeah. And so, like, yes, for, like, big applications, like you're talking about for tanks and, and even jets and shit, like, no, that's not that's not what it is. But, like, if you, let's say you could have those folded up, right? And let's mm-hmm. say you could fold them. Um, if you had, like, a, you know, a tank out there in the middle of a field and you just put it in front, of, like, unfolded it and opened it in front of the tank, you might not even see it. Maybe. I don't know if it might look weird if something that big. I don't know. 
But see, that's the thing, though, is you have to understand, too, that when you're just, say you're walking, you ever see, like, the 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 army videos? They're walking down, you know, the fucking old dirt road as an army, and oh, yeah. they're looking around and shit. If you wanted to, like, put that in a field, and that was, even if it had kind of, you could see the 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 perimeter of it, you know, you'd have to be really looking hard for it. You know what I'm saying? Because just your eyes, like, just gazing around, looking at shit, you would just bypass that thing with, like, nothing. It would blend True. enough. That's why camouflage works, right? Is it yeah. accurate? No. But it's accurate enough that it tricks your eye to think that it's real. Yeah. And so that's that's the same same principle to me. And it is good. It's amazing technology, honestly. It's almost not even like new technology. Because they used to make fucking like, like shower doors and bathroom windows out of that shit. Well. Out of a version of that. It would just refract so you couldn't see in. Yeah, but you there was you couldn't see anything behind it either. Like you could see the color because it yeah. was like, but that's not what this is. You can see, it's basically the same thing. You can see the brick and shit behind it. You can see. Uh, it's not do that one again. That was you could see the brick wall behind her. It's not the same thing. You could see the brick wall behind her, man. Uh, cloaking fucking. You already had it. Yeah, no, I I, I left it, so I gotta find it again. It's right here, right there. You can see the whole yeah, wall. but it's blurred. Yeah, but that's if I was that's, naked. That's by, how old school like bathroom no, windows and stuff No, but if you used to be. were standing behind that nude, I'd see your figure. I just wouldn't be able to put out like details it, of it, your nipples. It it would depend on how much, like the structure of this, how much it refracted. That that's what it depends on. Like the ones so that you're, you're saying that the this ones is that an were on extreme. In, yes, the ones that were on bathrooms and stuff weren't that ridiculous to where it would only blur and you could still see stuff behind it. But this is like an extreme version of that to where it spreads everything out so much that you can't even see it. I, I feel like it's different, man. I don't think it's different. I think it's I feel like, cause like, a, a, like you go in those old showers and shit and like, I could see your butt. Well, yeah. That's you know, what if I'm I saying. went and peed, I'd see your ass, but it would saying. just be a blurry ass. It'd be like a, a censored ass. That's what I'm saying. That's th- This is that on crack. Okay. I mean, I get what you're saying. It's like the new version, yeah. the high tech version. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I could be wrong, but that's. I mean, what, no. That's I, what I, I listen. I think it's a fair assessment because we we're old enough to remember those things. Because I don't think those are common anymore. I really don't. I feel like they're just glass at this point. But like your grandma's house, you know what I mean? Yeah. Your house growing up, like you had those blurry weird. Shit. Oh yeah. You had those blurry. Yeah, things, for man. sure, for sure. Uh, another thing I saw that I I thought was interesting was, and I I I should have known that this was a thing. Uh, but they have these like. In Japan and shit, they have like marriage get togethers. Have you seen this shit? So you go down like Times Square and I have the article here. I had you had you pull it up for me. And I and what caught is I have a video of a guy who went there and he was filming himself. And it's it's the marriage market. It's a wild thing, bro. It's it's weird. It's like because it's so old school. It's it's like it's weird that it still exists. Like a, a market. I think of like selling stuff. Yeah, but so what it is is uh this dude. And we could play the video later if you want to. But this dude went to he's like, this is where people find husbands and wives for their children. And you go into this market. It's like in, t- in town square, right? It's just downtown. And there were like, I don't want to say hundreds, but maybe a hundred fathers and mothers and shit. And what they would do is they would go meet other fathers and mothers. And they would like sometimes their kids would be with them. And they'd say, what does your kid do? Like, what does he look like? Uh, you know, this is my daughter. She's this old. She does this. And they would try to like make connections to find somebody to marry their daughter or marry their son to find their signature. Mm. It's not like you just met at the bar and shit clicked and you worked out and you, you end up getting married and all this stuff. They were, it's, it's like arranged marriage. It still happens. That's, that's weird. It is weird because like in, in a time like this, it, it, it what struck me. Is like you think that that kind of thing, like arranged marriage. I know some country. We know that some countries obviously still do that, especially oh, royalty, yeah. right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they will, you know, you marry another prince or a fucking, you know, but like just like a market, like a fucking Saturday market. Like, do dude. they have like do they have their own booths and they're just no, like, dude, like, hey, this is what I'm into. Like, you have like poster boards of shit, and you're just like, <sighs> uh, here I am. Pick me out of the lineup. Well, this dude was like an American guy. And he's like, I'm going to go in this thing. He had a friend with him. And he was just checking it out. And he's like, he went to. Was he uh, there to shop? Well, he did. He, he said that he could use a, a, a wife. <laughs> but he went up to this one Asian uh, older gentleman. And he like was like, excuse me, sir. And the guy looks at me. He's like, no. 
<laughs> like you, no, no, you're not the one for my kid. Go to the video, man. Just it was just. It's this, you see the dude's face right here? It's this right one? in the middle. Yep. Check this show. Shanghai, China, and I'm at the Shanghai, China. Market. So this is China. This, this isn't is Japan. Where Chinese parents and grandparents come to find wives and husbands for their children, and I'm going to be doing it today. Look at this. You can see here they've got the advertisements. They've got the height. They've got the, the job. Fuck? They've got all of the best attributes. Jim, can you help me find a suitable? I think there's plenty uh, inside. <laughs> you serious? Oh, yeah, 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 I'm serious. I'm serious. No, I'm joking. But uh, I'm I'm half serious. <laughs> and you can see behind me the it's a lot of people and their parents are all talking to each other, trying to figure out who is the best suit for their child or son. Oh, this what? this guy is he's selling his children yeah, very well. well. Maybe not his children, but someone else's children. Oh wow! Yeah. What this the fuck? Nishino, ma. Ni hao. No. <laughs> Get out of here, dude. You I'm fucking done. American. Sorry, he's a, he's he, a, he swipes left. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Isn't that fucking wild, yeah, man? Yeah, that's weird. It's like, it's weird to me. I, listen, like no faith in their children to choose the right one. You know what I'm I saying? I don't think it's a faith that, faith that they'll choose the right one. I think they're they're probably... What is it then? If it's not faith in them choosing the right one, what is it then? It's probably like a, a strict thing that they want their family to be. And like, these are, these are the things you have to have. These are the things you have to have in your, in your mate. Otherwise, it's a no-go. But they're holding up signs that say like, 5'5", five, five, dark hair, uh, medical professional. Well, they all have dark hair. That's kind of true. But I'm <laughs> saying they're, they're giving all the be- quote-unquote best attributes, apparently. Yeah. And then, like, you just, you read it, and you're like, huh, my son would like that. And you just go up, my son's six foot with dark hair and olive skin. And, I mean, you know, and then what? They fucking, well, let's meet up and go get coffee. Like, how does that even work? How does it work from the grandparents or the parents post this, right? They hold up a sign. Let's say they find another sign that, that of a guy, right, who fits the description that they're looking for. Where do you go from there? You call your daughter and say, I found you the one. I well, don't even mm-hmm. know what he looks like. But he's got all the right attributes. So was that guy that was like, no, 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 no. Was he like saying, no, 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 because you don't fit what I'm trying to sell? Or was he going, no, 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 no homosexual here? No, I don't think so, dude. Was he thinking like, hey, man, I don't think so. I want you. And he's like, no, 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 no. I think he saw a white man and said no. Oh. yeah. And to be fair, in in their culture, it seems right. they, they, They don't want to marry outside of their race. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's as as prevalent there as is like Western countries. You know what I'm saying? Mostly because I don't think there's as many people uh, living there. There was a there was a guy. We called him Uncle, but he wasn't an uncle. He was like just just random friend my dad had, mm. and I, I don't even know if, how much they were friends, but he like they knew each other. He was around the family, but his name was Arnie. Arnie. Yeah, he that's and, a fucking name, bro. <laughs> I don't know. It's been fucking. I don't even know that this real name or not. Honestly, I it have is, no idea. It is if you believe it is. But he ended up getting a mail order bride. Yeah, but that's. Just, but is is that that's kind of the same fucking thing? The guy at the studio, except at he, the he drink probably wasn't studio. walking down and shopping on the market. He was doing a fucking. An, another. Yeah, but system. here's the thing: like the guy that was at the studio with us, great dude. Right at yeah. Drinking Bro Studio, he had like a quote unquote mail order bride kind of, mm. and I didn't know that was still a thing. It is a thing. I I didn't know that was stupid. It's a thing. Still, but see, the the one that. thing I would say about that is now you can question the girl. I think that would be you can question the guy too. Let's be real. But like you question the girl because you say, listen, are you only doing this because it gets you into America because it gets you a green card? Right. Well, there is that. If it was only Americans shopping for you. I, I think a lot of it comes from America. If you, want my you think opinion. so? I think so. Yeah. I have no idea. I think they want to be here and that's so easy because they will, they get married and they eventually get, you know. Yeah, maybe. Citizenship. But so it's that you, you question like five years down the road. Like, so let's say you get citizenship. What, what happens five years? Do they stay with you? Because let's be real. Like that guy was cool as shit in her studio. Yeah. You know, not a bad looking dude. Cool guy. I actually met his wife we, at the Pantera concert. She was there with him. Mm. Very nice, dude. They looked like they were having a blast. She was super fucking nice, dude. Pretty, you know, the whole nine, right? But you got to think of some of these dudes that are ordering mail order brides. Like, 
are they the top picks? Nope. Well, no, they're not. They're not, dude. Yeah, that's true. But I heard with like, okay, so you ever see like the uh, older man with like the Vietnamese woman, maybe a little bit younger, like you know he's he's sixty, she's fucking forty something. Mm, yeah, I see it all the time. I just saw it at Costco the other day. I saw it like three couples, like an older dude with like a Vietnamese wife or, you know, I'm, I'm assuming wife, a girlfriend. Right. But I heard that like a lot of them are, they're very loyal because they're just looking for a good man to take care of them. You know what I'm saying? To like help them take care of them, be there for them. And, and you know, some value, I, I guess, American men for that. They work hard, you know, they, they take care of their wives. And and they are loyal because I mean there's a, there's a thing where you see people and you're like that guy's old as shit and his wife is clearly younger, you know, attractive, and she's still with him, bro. It's not as uh, relevant as I thought. The Philippines do it the most. Wait, are those are where they come from? The most popular male are red countries. Yeah, that's where they're coming from. Oh, okay. But it says right here from fourteen two thousand fourteen two thousand eighteen. There was only less than 7,000 visas made for mail order brides. Well, that's, but see, that's not crazy because what if they get here and they just divorce quickly and just move back because they can't actually make it that long? Because I think you have to Maybe. ask a certain time frame. But those, yeah, but you still get a visa when you get here. A it's, visa, it's, but yeah, a fiance visa. Okay. It says what states mail order brides arrive in? The number one, California. Yeah. Number two, Texas. Yeah. But look at the difference. Oh, actually, it's not number two. 6,300 plus California. Texas has 2,600. New, New York, York has 3,200. Florida, Florida, 31. Yeah. Washington, weirdly, 1,300. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, but most of the mail-order brides come from the, the Philippines, Philippines and which, Vietnam. Which is, which that Arnie guy, I think his mail-order bride was Filipino. Wait a second, man. Filipino, who? Oh, Arnie? Yeah, that Arnie guy. Uh, Philippines, Vietnam, that makes sense. Mexico? They call that the border crossing bride. <laughs> like they're why do you need to order one? They're they're literally coming over and by the millions right now. Yeah. They're here. They're coming for free. You know what I'm saying? Like if you really wanted a mail order bride from Mexico, you could just go to Eagle Pass and and they would probably be real stoked. You know what I'm saying? Wait, you're you're gonna take me in, you're gonna feed me? You're gonna let me live That's with true. you? That's true. They would love it, bro. Plus they get their little kickback from the government. You know? Well, don't you. be going and giving people ideas now. I'm just saying. Mexico is a weird one. I got to be honest with you. It's a little bit of a weird one. The UK, Dominican Republic, China, Brazil, Colombia, Ukraine, Thailand, and Russia. Russian, I thought would be more. eh. I feel like Russian mail order brides seems, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I grew up hearing. Russian mail order brides. That's what I felt, I feel like, at least. Mm, I saw a band say that he's going to go over to China and try to get himself a a nice, a nice woman. (laughs) He says, wait, my mom's Filipino. (laughs) Me so horny. Was she a mail order bride? Flex says Washington politicians all marry Asians or men dress as women. If That's because you know they're spies. That's true, dude. That's true, man. Yeah. You got to be careful with that stuff. I couldn't do that. I, I couldn't. Be a spy? I could, no, I, well, I couldn't. I, no, I wouldn't do that either. But I'm saying order order a bride. I, I couldn't. I could never do that. I wouldn't do that either. I just it feel just like it's, be weird. it would seem illegitimate all the time. I'd feel like a slave owner. Wow. That's rough that you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they. I would, mean, you bought this person. I know that's true. You, it's like you, and they, and, and they, then they have to like, and they owe you something. To your old, your desires, and they that's owe you weird. something. Yeah, I get what you're saying. It's a weird way to say that's it. Weird. But I, <laughs> I, I feel like, and especially me, and I think you too, to an extent, man. I feel like I would never. I would always question whether they really wanted to be with me. Because they they came over here. You, there's more to it than just oh, I fell in love with this person. They moved here. Yeah, they came over because there's a back. Fucking there's more to, to it. it, and I feel like at any moment, and I, I just hate that shit. I like knowing that my wife loves me and that we're in a marriage. You know what I mean? And we work things out. But there would be this weird thing in the back of my mind that's like, if I pissed her off, she would just leave me because she's already a citizen now, and she could just go find some other dude here. Because it's not like you just meet up and you hit it off. Yeah. And, and you have a connection. You have to hope that you have a connection. That's true. Because I wonder how many people have actually, actually meet them before they uh, I don't know. purchase them. I'm sure you, <laughs> you keep saying that. It's fucking weird, man. <laughs> That's what it it's, is. it's a weird way to say it. You end up giving their fucking family money 
I don't know. Right? It's like, it's like that, adopting a kid, but it's is a that, wife. That's not how. That's how it works, right? Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. It is weird. I, you just keep saying it in a weird way. It, it makes it sound <laughs> worse. Uh, but it's true. Like you don't. There's. You're hoping that it works. And you know, you watch those like. And, my, and listen, I watched some of them. I think uh, Married at First Sight. I really like that one. That that one's the one I actually will get get into. But my, we were actually. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They were watching that one, that dating one, where they all in the bubbles and they're trying to communicate. Yeah. Like those things don't work most of the time. They don't work no, because don't. listen, you can have a connection with somebody, but like I'm I'm being real, like. Uh, an attraction to someone is very, very important. Like you can have a great connection with somebody and not be attracted to them. And that doesn't always mean that it's going to work out long term. True. So like you talk to somebody through this bubble and that's why I don't believe it. Right. You talk to somebody through a bubble. Let's say you, you, you hit it off and you have great conversations and you're like, man, I really like this person. Yeah. Um, you don't really know until you have to deal with real life situations. No, I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm saying when you actually say that's the bubble girl I want. Right. Oh. And then you meet for the first time. If it's if you aren't physically attracted to that person, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm not saying like, yeah, she's cute. Like that, that's doable. Right. But if you're just like, oh, my God, it's not my type. It's always going to be part of it. That's it's hard to overcome that. I know people always say, like, it shouldn't be about looks and it, well, it that, shouldn't. be. That's about why looks. on those shows they decide, will you will you marry me? And they haven't seen each other. Yeah. And then they open the doors and they fucking, yeah, no. they're like, Oh yeah. But and then the girl's the, like, but I look the, like Megan Fox. But then the show keeps going okay. and then they're, they're keeping their options open as the show. Yes. Yeah, it, Cause it's that's not, that's yeah. not how it works. Yeah. And, and listen, I, I agree that like looks fade and looks should not be the only thing, but you have to have some physical attraction. You have to. Oh yeah. You have to, you have to, you have to, you have to like, you know, you go home and I see my wife. I'm like, yeah, I'm attracted to my wife, obviously, right? You're attracted to your wife, obviously. And so, like, you, like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're, yeah. If it's just like, ah, she's got a great personality. <laughs> it's like a hard, I'm sorry, it's hard. That sounds really bad. I get it. But that's, you understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Like, there's a difference between, uh, and that is to say, I, I, like, some of the stuff that moved me the most, like watching TikTok, is when, like, uh, a married couple, something significant happens to one of them. Mm. A car wreck, a uh, bad disease, uh, being paralyzed, something, right? And that person, like, sticks out with that person and is there for them. That is, like, amazing, bro. Because, like, you know, push comes to shove. Like, how many people would really do that? How many people would really, really do that? You know what I'm saying? Like, would do it all for them? Because I feel like there's a lot of, like, crappy marriages. I think a lot of people get married for the wrong reason. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Especially in modern sure. times. And, for like, sure. when shit got really tough, that's why divorce rates are so high. And so when you see somebody who becomes deformed or they're unable to move or, you know, just not be what they always have been, it's amazing to see the wife or the husband, whichever stick around, stick around and just like, and that's how it should be. You're married, yeah. you know, thickness, uh, health, all the other stuff, right? That's done. Um, and so that, in that aspect, it's not about looks. You've built this bond. You have this marriage. You love that person. And it doesn't matter what the looks are, but I'm talking about the initial thing. There's a, you go to a bar and I'm not single anymore, so I'm not out mingling. Mm. But if you go to a bar and we all been to the bars when we were single, there's a reason why you're not talking to every woman at the bar. Some do. I didn't. You just look around and you go, not, not my type, not my style, yeah. not my thing. Don't like that. Don't like this. And you, you have to be picky a little bit. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know why we're even talking about this. <laughs> we got oh, the mail order bride shit. You get to see it and you get some picture that you send her. And like, I guarantee most guys are like, don't really look like the picture that they send, you know? Yeah, I don't know. And you think she's just going, it'll work. <laughs> like, that's how I feel like it is. I feel like they don't get a choice. No, I feel like they have a choice. Do you think it. they have a choice? Well, yeah, maybe they a, now. They have a choice. Maybe now they have a choice. Mail order rides. Back choice. in the day, they probably didn't have a choice. Well, money, to money talks. That's a sketchy time period. Because <laughs> uh, back in the day, I guarantee it was like, yeah, I'll, I'll support you. I'll give your family a a year's mm. fucking wages. I get your daughter. What does Flex say? Take your age, divide it in half, and add seven. That's the youngest you can go. So I'm 39. You're saying what? 15, 19, add seven, 26. At this age, that's what you're saying? If I was single right now at 39, Almost, the, old, the youngest little, I should date is 26. A little over 10 years younger. A little over 10 years younger. No, 20, 13. Divide your age in half, yeah. add seven. That's what you said that. 
That's a, you know, it's a, it's a weird one. It's a weird one, man. It's a weird one. Where do you come up with those numbers? I don't know where you come up. I feel like that's I, I like, think you've made that shit up. That's my Greg shit. You're like playing with numbers, <laughs> man. You're, you're, you're just making shit up now at this point. Uh, no, it's, it's weird. I, I, I think that I, it's kind of known that like. Asher says, I believe some do not have a choice. They probably don't. I, I'm, I'm half joking. I would like to think now that's a choice that they have. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, but you're, you're absolutely right. There's, there's. That's a weird thing. There's some trafficy shit, I'm sure. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Somebody's somebody's not getting a good deal out of that. Mm. I'd like to think that they could see a picture and go, mm, I don't like that one. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm sure some do. But <sighs> remember that guy that was on TV and he had like no neck? Kind of a round guy, had no neck, and he, he was he was trying to get with that Asian woman. No. I feel like that was one of the dudes I thought. I don't remember who he was. He was, it was like. No neck guy? Yeah, dude. But li- like. Yeah, he literally had no neck. He was just like a round dude. And he was like, he was like really pot, like every, had tons of videos on him. He was like on some TV show. He had like Spina Bifida or something? I don't know. He just had no neck. I'm sure somebody knows what I'm talking about. No. But he was like trying to date this Asian woman or he's like trying to marry. He's like, I love her. I love her. And she's like, not really feeling it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look it up, dude. Man I'm with no at- neck <sighs> dating Asian. Do that. That has to pop up. If that doesn't pop up, then Google's fucking. <laughs> uh, yeah, right there. Ninety Day Fiance. Big Ed? There it is, dude. Oh, I do remember. You this do guy. remember him, Big Ed. Big Ed. Big Ed. Big Neck Ed, dude. That is a fucking odd looking human being. That guy looks like some turtle creature, like a shellless yeah. turtle. The poor dude, though. He'd play the penguin really well. There was this funny little fucking skit, though, where Pauly Shore was with him, and they went shopping. Like, they were in, like, an antique store, and Pauly Shore is just ripping this dude up. And down. Oh, I think I remember He's like, that. why do you keep fucking talking shit? And he's like, he's got no neck, bro. You know, it's like a weird, <laughs> it was a weird thing, man. That dude's kind of, but see, like, it's, that's who I picture. I'm not saying, like, listen, like, he has a condition or something going on. Let's be real. I'm not making fun of his condition by any means. I'm just saying, like, that's the kind of dude that would get a mail-order bride. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's not like he's dressed poorly and stinks or anything. I, I'm just saying there's something going on that he doesn't feel like he can get somebody in real life. In, in, in like, just his normal day life through work at a, at a social event, he just is not going to meet somebody. So he has to order somebody. And he had the same thing. He felt insecure about, and she was kind of like half in, half out. When she would say stuff that you're like, ooh, she does not like this dude. But then she'd like, be flirtatious so it was like it was weird it's like a game it was a weird mind game well it was also a reality show that's true 100 percent. that's true so how much of that is actually real i don't know man uh it, dude which is I, why i don't like any of those shows anyway i i, I have a hard time believing now some i think are more realistic and you can kind of see it but anytime i've said this to my wife this is one thing that you will never overcome with anything like that the minute you have a camera in your face all day long you act differently Oh, yeah. For you sure. will act differently. You will say things that you don't normally say. You will act in a way. And that's why when they get out of the camera and they're like, God, he was a real asshole last night, you know, on these dating shows. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, he's playing up to the camera. He yeah. knows that the world is watching. He's developed his... a character. Yeah. yeah. And, and how do you overcome that? That's very hard to overcome. And that's the same with celebrities, right? Like how... well, most of those people that are on those things are never in the public eye ever again so just they're not but i'm saying you can see why a celebrity who's always in the public eye or always has a a camera in his face acts a certain way but in real life he's fucking puff daddy Mm. where he does creepy shit yeah but he has to hide that creepy shit because he's making money in a in a fake world true you know what i'm saying yep so it's like i i I don't two sides of the coin yeah i don't trust any of that shit I don't, I don't believe, rarely do I see somebody that I, I watch. And there's been a couple times where I'm like, that person seems very genuine. Keanu Reeves. Yeah, yeah, Keanu Reeves is one of those guys. But I'm talking about just reality shows with a oh. bunch of nobodies. I'm saying there's a very few times where I'm like, that person seems genuinely like a good person. Like, they're not really, like, they don't care about the cameras. They seem like they're a gen, genuine person. No. Very rare. Yeah, it's very rare. Very rare. Because they, it's their moment to shine. And they're going to try to shine. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we got like a couple minutes, bro. Let's do some Dave's TikTok, man. It's been Ooh. a fucking second. I, I got some Dave's TikTok. I don't know what it is about that. I just want to like pump iron every time I hear that fucking thing. It's like almost <laughs> nothing. There's nothing to it. I just really enjoy it, man. 
Uh, right. Let's do what fun stuff. You see Joe Biden's uh, blurp today. I think it was today. When he actually. yelled at the guy? No, he fucking said some weird shit. And he was with Japan. Elect me. Okay. And he said that he's uh, he's the he's the twentieth century. <laughs> Listen, I'm to, the twentieth century. I'm in the twentieth century. Mm, you're off a little bit, but see what he has to say, man. His fucking aviators, man. This is with Japan, bro. How embarrassing. Elect me. I'm in the 20th, 20th century. This is third. Next question. Who do I call on next? Hang on a second. I got my list here. Oh, God. Hang on. Look at the guy from I the apologize. Band. I apologize. Really, of AFP. This Elect dude me. Is so I'm close to what death. in the fuck? He's so. I, I feel like we've heard this a billion times because he does a show time. Who am I going? Oh. Uh, but he it, sounds that's, winded. That's. That's the worst one I've seen. I'm Where the 20. Like, ah, hold on. I need the, the third. Uh, let me see here. Hold on. A second. Elect me. Him. Elect me. Elect me. I'm, I'm the, the 20. I'm the 20th century. This century. <laughs> I'm the 20. Why is he saying elect me if he's in China? I don't. He's not in China. He's here. Oh, Japan. He, they're just Japan, there. Japan is visiting. Oh. But that's embarrassing. Japan's an ally. That's embarrassing. Dude. You see the guy from Japan that was standing at the podium just going, what the fuck? Yeah, he's, he's like, um, he's, all right, get he, out of this shit. Right? Weird. Is every that, time I see Joe Biden say do something like that, I, all mm-hmm. I think of is uh, that scene from the Truman Show where Jim Carrey is like, he's sitting in the car mm-hmm. and his wife all of a sudden does like an, an ad promo and he's like, who the hell are you talking to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much it, bro. Uh, the next one, I got this soccer one. I thought it was pretty funny. This guy gets fucking pegged in the head, dude. Okay. And, like, let me play this out real quick so you can kind of understand what's going on here. He gets hit, but, like, the, it's the comedy of, like, the romance to this. And, like, he's so out of it. It's like a cartoon. I, I fucking love it. I don't know why I love it, but I fucking love it, dude. Soccer. And the music, too. Like, obviously, we got to maybe turn that music down. The music makes it better, though. So get on there and check out the music. This dude right here... <clears throat> You got popped up. Yeah. This dude, he's fucking stacked, bro. He is is rugby. It's not even soccer. It's rugby. He fucking punts this ball straight in this guy's dome, bro. Okay. Okay. Hard. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, he's out of it. He is fucking gone, (laughs) bro. And he felt the gentle crest. What is it about soccer? I won't say rugby because rugby, I think, is a real man sport, dude. That's some tough shit. Like, it's tough. Those guys are fucking brutes, man. So I don't want to like dog on on the rugby players so much, but what is it about uh, guys running around the field with a ball that's just kind of there's a little bit of game to it, and a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Well, we never did the one. Which one? I don't think we ever did. Or did we? All the soccer compilation where they were like putting their fingers in each other's butts. Oh, and I fucking, think we did. I think we did part of it a long time ago. Mm, it's pretty gross, dude. <laughs> I don't. I don't get. It. All right, uh, another one I thought was kind of weird. Scroll down here. Let's see what you got here. Um, yeah, do. Oh, I don't want to do that. I'll wait for that one. There is this fucking uh, scroll up and you see the helicopter one right there. Mm-hmm. So this one is a news story. We'll end on this one. I think this is interesting. The police chase mystery drone. Have you seen this? No, there was a drone that was being chased by police. I believe it was. They'll talk about it. And it was going over 100 miles per hour. Now, here's the thing. They couldn't capture this thing, capture it. And it was going like. Miles, 100 miles an hour, supposedly, long distances. And they keep saying it's a drone, but the dude brings up a good point in this. So I'll just play it and okay. hear what he has to say. Welcome back. Only on 12 News at 6, police chasing a drone across the city at more than 100 miles an hour. And now the FBI is looking for the pilot. Tonight, the police report from February incident shows that the pilots could not believe what they were chasing. Team 12's William Pitts brings us the story that you won't see anywhere else. According to the police report, this was far beyond a commercially available drone like this one. And nobody has any Mm. idea who was flying it or why. A high-speed chase thousands of feet above Tucson was something even the cops couldn't catch. Thousands of feet? Okay, listen. The first time anyone saw it, it almost crashed into a Customs and Border Protection helicopter at davis Monthan Air Force Base. Mm-hmm. Tucson PD put up their helicopter to find it. Now check this According out. According to the police report, the Tucson PD pilot called it a very sophisticated and specialized drone. It had a mm. green light on its belly. 
but they could never see it, not even with infrared goggles. They chased it all over Military. the city. Here's the flight path of the helicopter. Look at the flight path. They circled at least 14 times, going 100 miles an hour. And the drone kept evading them, even circling the chopper at that speed. Finally, <laughs> one of the pilots said the thing went over the top of Mount Lemon, more than 14,000 feet up. That's when the helicopter started running out of gas. But the drone was still going more than an hour later. Do you understand how Come on, bizarre? bro. The fuck? Come on, bro. It was going for more than an hour? Yeah. It, listen, if you have a drone, you know you're getting 10 minutes max on that. I'm sure there's Well, better. I'm sure like military sure. stuff. Like but That's not the point. It was going 100 miles per hour, went at over a mountain at hour. least, circling a helicopter, went over a 14,000 foot mountain, kept going as the helicopter ran out of gas, bro. And you're going to, and they, they, I like how they played it off in the beginning. Like we're looking for the pilot. There was no fucking pilot. The pilot's in Mars, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, it's not yeah. from here, dude. That's not from here. Come on. Yeah. It's either like a very, I don't, obviously I don't know how sophisticated <sighs> the, the drone technology is for military stuff. God. So, so it's either like a super high tech drone where somebody was doing some spying. It was over an air force base. It was by a fucking air force, air force base. This thing? Yeah, that's yeah. what they said at the beginning. Okay. And then it outruns a fucking helicopter, goes for, uh, 14,000 feet in elevation. Yeah. Never runs out of juice. It's either... It didn't just very, outrun a helicopter. It circled this fucking helicopter as it was going on. It was playing out. with it. It was playing with it. And it was 1,000 feet in the air initially. Well, almost it, hit it a almost helicopter. Hit, well, it almost came down and hit a vehicle. No, it was it, a helicopter. I thought it said it hit like a patrol vehicle. Oh, oh was wow. it a patrol or was it a patrol helicopter? I thought that's what it was. No, I think it said it almost came down to a patrol vehicle. Where is it? Welcome back. Not that boring. Was it right in the beginning though, right? Yeah. Tonight, the police report from February brings us the story that you won't see. Or this was far beyond a commercially available drone right like here? this one. And nobody has any idea who was flying it or why. A high-speed chase thousands of feet above Tucson was something even the cops couldn't catch. Is the first time anyone saw it, right. it almost crashed into a customs and border oh, and helicopter. helicopter. Okay, helicopter okay. Davis okay. But here's the thing. Uh, now, listen, I know that the drones, like even great drones, have really good cameras on them and shit, and you can kind of wear goggles and see where you're going. But when you're circling something at 100 miles per hour like a helicopter, I just feel like that would be very difficult. Hmm. And it's not in your field of range anymore, right? Yeah. If, 100 miles per hour, you're, you're, you're not, you know, if you're in a parking lot or fucking, you're way far away, dude. Oh, yeah. And you go over a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Flex in the comments says uh, that's one big battery pack. He said our big drone because he... Yeah. Oh, our guy on, on our Patreon here, if you guys are on our Patreon, go sign up. You get to be a part of this little group here. Uh, does like horror movies and stuff. Yeah. And he said, he just said his big drone would do 15, 20 minutes tops. Yeah. Yeah. That's what so, I'm saying. It's it, What's weird about the, the, what kind of struck me was they played it off like, we're on the hunt for a pilot. I'm like, you're not finding it, bro. Like, it's not like, yeah. maybe that's not. A drone. Because all they said was, and here's the other thing that was slipped in there, was it had a green light on the underbelly, mm -hmm. and they couldn't see it in infrared. So it's cloaked. It had, in, had like a fucking, some kind of camouflage. If, you, if you're, if you like, if those fans, if it's a typical drone. It would have a motor fans, at least. It, it, have get, it would have a heat signature. And it would have a heat signature, but they could not see it. So it had some kind of different propulsion system. The fuck was that? That's all I'm saying. I don't think it was a drone. This dude. was in February? Yeah. I think it's an interesting fucking story that I, I've heard almost got no one talked over. about. No one's talked about that. That's an alien ship, bro. It, but see, that's the thing. Is it military grade? I don't know. I did just see a video today about some, somebody talking about anti-gravity propulsion and that uh, they had discovered it and that person is dead now. But she had said in a video that it had been discovered four other times previously also. Mm. And mm. all of them are gone. I don't know, dude. I don't know. All I know is this. You can keep saying it's a drone. You can keep saying that it's on the, but I just don't believe it, dude. I don't believe it. At some point, you know, 
I'm actually a little shocked that they didn't say that they is an unidentified object that they played it off as a drone. Yeah, I mean, unless unless they could see, like they, said it they was, couldn't see it. They even said that they, they said it. They have to be able to see it if they're chasing it. I know, but I don't think they saw detail, and I think they just assumed. But you it was can a tell drone. what a drone is. Yeah, but what if it's a fucking little like alien probe, dude? You know, like a little probe drone. Yeah, you know I man. Just fucking hang out. We still remember that Maybe. ball. Remember that video that? Uh, oh yeah, the, that was just like yeah, and it was like an aerial view. Mm -hmm. It was weird. It was, was weird. weird. And it kind of looked dronish, but remember we, we we zoomed in. You could actually zoom in. It was high def, and you could zoom into that thing, and there was no like propulsion. There was mm -hmm. no innards to this thing. Yeah, it just innards. It, that's a weird word. And it is kind of a weird word. <laughs> I feel like my grandpa. The, the, and isn't it weird also that like the alien talk has died has died way down? Well, I just think there's nothing new. You know, there was a lot coming out and being kind of released. Whether they wanted us to see that, you know, strategically. Um, but it just, there's other things that are popping up. This is yeah. everything. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, two weeks. Like we're not talking about the ship, you know, knocking down the bridge. What happened to the fucking bridge, man? Yeah, is that bridge true. up? No one knows. No. I'm just saying that's, that's, that's how this fucking shit works. You, you talk yeah. about some, you move on next day. It's going to be, true. you know, fucking whatever. But, uh, dude, fun show, man. Yeah, it was good. It's a fun show, dude. Uh, I fucking love you guys. I do. I do love you guys. It's a real joy coming here after a long day's work and just shooting shit. And I mean that. I don't I don't mean that. Listen, I could be at home right now. I haven't seen my wife all day. I haven't seen my kids today. And I'm here yeah. talking to you guys because I enjoy this. I really do. So, Chris, cheers to you. I'm going to hold up this here. My old can. Cheers, cheers to you to all. You. you take care of yourselves and we will see you on uh, Friday. Friday. Yeah. Later.